Okay, so Apple just announced its latest features for upcoming iOS 17 that's going to hit all iPhone devices in September. And there are some features that Android should copy. For example, as soon as you horizontally charge the iPhone wirelessly, it becomes this useful display. You could be working while listening to music. It gives usual information like time along with your to-do. It acts up as a screensaver or a funky clock display. Let's say you're focusing and you have a 25 minute timer running, it will display that. You can ask Siri a question and it will take up the screen to present that information. And it doesn't stop there, this is all customizable. Now, there might be some apps in the Play Store that does some of these things in some cheap way, but they're all glitchy and they do not work seamlessly. Next, and one of the most important ones for me, iPhones will now delete OTPs or verification code based messages automatically after you've used them with autofill. So you get an OTP, you use it with autofill and they get deleted by themselves. So no more junk messages piling up. Next, with iOS 17, iPhone will introduce full screen contact posters when someone calls. They look really good and really cool. And the best part is you can control how you look when you call someone on their iPhone and also decide how they look when they call you on your iPhone. And the customization is endless. You get so many options to personalize the photo, the name with the font, the thickness, the color, and you get multiple styling options just the way you do when customizing lock screens on iOS. Now, in the past, there may have been certain apps on the Android Play Store that have tried to achieve this functionality in some half-baked manner but trust me, an app that gets integrated at OS level in this way works amazingly well. Next, we've known that AirDrop is this great way for iPhones to connect to each other and send very small or very large files very quickly. And now to send files, you just bring the iPhones closer and the AirDrop can be initiated, making it even faster. And guess what? Even during the transfer, if the phones get too far apart that they lose connectivity, the phones will continue to transfer using the internet. By the way, the same gesture can be used to initiate share play to share and play music and share contact information with one another using name drop. Now, Androids have had nearby share that pretty much works the same way that AirDrop works right now, but not in this new way of AirDropping. Next, the iPhone's default browser Safari is also getting some really cool functionalities. Like now it has all these tab groups which you can easily navigate between. These are nothing but collection of similar tabs that you can club together under one name. And you can create them easily from here, right? So it's really simple. Second, your websites in incognito mode are locked and can only be accessed through PIN or biometrics. And you know, that keeps it very secure. And third, if you're on an article, you could just say Siri read this article or just tap on listen to page in the menu and it's going to start reading out, narrating the page to you, almost like a music player which you can access in your notification center or the dynamic island. Now, sure, you can find one or the other browser on the Play Store that achieves one or some of these functionalities, but having this built in into the native browser, that seamlessness you cannot achieve through any third party browser. Now, I bet this has happened to you. Someone's calling you on your phone and you're looking at it thinking, should I pick it up or not? You're either busy, mentally not prepared, or you just wish that they instead texted you. But now on the iPhone, I could let a call go to voicemail while it shows what the person has to say to me as the iPhone converts everything to text real time. I mean, this is really cool because you get to know right there and then whether that call is worth picking up or not. Also, Apple has introduced a dedicated section on mental health and with that, you know, you can log how you feel every day along with the reason and all of that gets recorded for you to refer to. And by the way, all of this can actually be done so much more easily with the Apple Watch. But what's more critical here is that there are inbuilt health questionnaires that are a set of templatized questions often used for a very broad level evaluation. And similarly, there are tests for early stage evaluation of depression and anxiety risk. And here's one of the more useful things. If you've got an Apple Watch, it will now track how much time you spend in sunlight, which I've learned over time is extremely important and has impact on your mood, sleep and body function. So all in all, Android should really focus on this stuff too. Next, iPhone's photo app has become a lot smarter also with iOS 17. It can recognize more things rather than just people, for example, pets, plant and food. For example, in here, the Photos app identifies that there's a plant in this photo. And when you click on it, it actually tells you more about that plant, which is phenomenal. Same goes for pets. If you see that icon, the eye icon has changed to a dog and it tells me which breed it is. And I can click on it, get more information. And this is not limited to photos. 
uh, even when I'm in videos, I could just pause at a frame and it will show me that it's identified a dog. And again, the same stuff, you get the breed info. Now, practically speaking, this functionality may not be something of frequent use to you, but I'm more interested in possibilities that it opens up. For example, your search and recommendations can get so much better with this kind of identification that the Photos app does. And lastly, iPhone now has a setting that will scan incoming photos and videos for sensitive content or nudity and alert you beforehand. Now, of course, this is great for parents to protect their children from inappropriate content or even adults who unexpectedly receive content that's something that they don't desire to see. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. These were some iOS 17 features that I felt were really cool and Android should not refrain from copying these. Now, iOS 17 is going to come to all devices uh, iPhone 11 onwards, so iPhone 10 or iPhone 8 are not going to be supported and it's going to come somewhere around September when the iPhone 15 launches, so hang tight. And that's pretty much it guys about this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And as always, if you did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all. Really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.